back to Why in the Morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. This particular interview we dive into a conversation that talks about children's clothing brand. So you and I most definitely will, will agree that parents, especially mothers, yeah, they tend to go overboard highly aspirational when it comes to just uh, uh, choosing the right outfit for their kids you know fashion you have to be on the trend side and uh, from head to do head to do to toe specifically merchandise on point but at, at the same time we also have to consider the price so joining me in studio uh it's Catherine Jogo uh, she's the founder of Katrina Kids Closet Hi, Catherine. Hello, Michelle. Happy Tuesday. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So, Catherine, before we get into why you chose to specifically uh, get into the kids' uh, clothing industry, so who is Catherine before she ventured into business? Uh, my name is Catherine Jogo. Um, I am an entrepreneur. Uh, that's what we've been doing since 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are happy to be in the business okay yeah before you ventured into the business world what was Catherine doing prior um i was i was just from campus mm -hmm. i graduated in 2016 okay. december 2016 and i thought i didn't do anything else mm -hmm. from campus i i look for employment but it was not forthcoming in right. the first few months and i thought hmm, let me try business i think this will favor me right. what did you pursue back in campus uh, pursued communication and public relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So for most students, and uh, uh, that the fact that you've already just cleared school, mm -hmm. uh, we tend to, uh, you know, be consistent in looking for employment. Mm -hmm. What pushed you to the point where, like now, I am ready to start something of my own? Especially just few months after you graduated. Four months, you said. Yeah. Yes. Four months. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened in, in campus? I was doing a few. I was doing small, small businesses mm -hmm. uh, since second year. Okay. I was selling second-hand items mm -hmm. to my fellow students, door-to-door, -door, hostels, all that. Some days in the market, all I would right. sell in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had that passion for business. Uh, at some time, uh, and for there, I thought maybe what happens if I don't get employment? Because it's possible. Absolutely. Many youths are, are an unemployed. I'm not an exception. Mm -hmm. And we'll be competing for the jobs, the available jobs. Very true. I'm here, I've been in business, I've been mm -hmm. doing small, small business, mm -hmm. I've saved a little money, what do I do? Mm -hmm. So, in for the I knew, I'll start a business, but I didn't know which business I'll start. Mm -hmm. So that's the passion, I had the passion for business from the word go. From the word go, yeah. And it's, uh, it's very nice that you pointed out that no one is special when, yeah. uh, when, yeah. when it comes to just seeking uh, for job opportunities, you're all out True. here. Uh, different uh, industries and uh, when the term calls, you know, yeah. <laughs> looking mm -hmm. for a job, you're all out there. No one is special, right? True, true. So how did you get into the kids' uh, fashion industry? Um, in 2017, uh, I saw the, I, I didn't, I, I told you I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yes. But I realized parents, mm -hmm. they're struggling. I could see online parent and looking for kids item, kids item, I was like, hmm, this can be a good business. And parent, they must shop okay. for their kids. So that I can, st I can just have a page, I advertise my things and they'll buy. And I realized most people want to shop online. Right. So it started off online. All right, when we look at the uh, our Kenyan uh, parents, okay, mm -hmm. I don't know about uh, the today's. Uh, I'm so sure that f looking way back, like yeah. a couple of years back, parents were not so keen when it comes to fashion trends. Mm -hmm. But now, towards access of social media yeah. and the influence of the uh, the Westerners from the all what go the Westerns just even social media mm -hmm. having access to see what the other uh, countries are, are up to when it comes to fashion. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the, uh, our Kenyan parents uh, of the 21st century mm -hmm. that is, mm -hmm. they're so much keen on trends when it comes to looking out for their kids and yes. merchandise. Yeah. Yes, they are. You know, in our shop, we get many parents, uh, they, they, they can't purchase what the kids want. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the kids have been watching a lot of cartoons, Parents know about this, this label is nice and we have nice labeled clothes. Okay. They'll come specifically 
saying, my kid want this. Mm -hmm. It's not about the parent, it's about the kid, mostly, mostly. The biggest percent, it's about the kid. It's not, I want buy this, but when parents show the kids that, mm, this shop has this, this, the kid will choose what they want, the parent will come and buy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, so another And they're very keen okay. on quality mm -hmm. and nice, unique things. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's look at what uh, the Katrina Kids uh, Closet, that's mm -hmm. the name of the business. Yes, true. What do you specialize in? Because we have so many other uh, <laughs> shops that yes, sell true. kids clothes. So what exactly do you specialize in? Mm, unlike most shops around, maybe in town, for us we do themed outfits, okay. the Marvel World, and labels. Oh, right. We specialize in the two. So if I'm a parent mm -hmm. and my, my, my child is asking about Superman, just mm -hmm. all the uh, movies from the Marvel mm -hmm. world, then you're the person to go to. I have Superman outfits. All right. So when, it's called, when we, well, we talked about labels, mm -hmm. so maybe you could take us to that. Mm, the, labels, the labels that we have currently in our shop, we have the Louis Vuitton, we have Fendi, we have the Adidas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey. Uh, you've just mentioned, <laughs> <laughs> you know, those are very, very well-known brands yeah, out true, here. True. So, how affordable uh, are the merchandise, the outfits, the shoes? Mm -hmm. How affordable are they? They are quite affordable because, uh, like, Adidas three-piece set mm -hmm. for a boy, okay. it goes for twenty-five hundred to to three thousand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 uh, okay. <laughs> hey, uh -huh. and our kids are putting on brand names, yeah? Yeah, true. How did you get connection and where do you actually get your your uh, your outfits from? Um, when I started, initially when I started, mm -hmm. uh, I started looking for stuff. I started shipping from China okay. initially in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I downloaded the app, the Alibaba app. Okay. I looked for suppliers, I could get suppliers, maybe sometimes I could get bad quality stuff, uh, sometimes they could not be sent, and you can't claim anywhere. As long as the agent, the shipping agent says we didn't receive them, you can't complain. Okay. Uh, after gambling for long, uh, a friend in China connected me to one specific supplier, right. and that's the supplier I've been working with mm -hmm. in China since then. And I'm very specific. I want good quality. You know, in China, you can choose poor quality at a lower price okay. and good quality at a higher price. So it's you to tell the supplier, I want good quality. And the supplier is going to give you that and the price of the good quality. Mm -hmm. The grade. They go with grade. Mm -hmm. So you say, I want the best grade. So it's sent. Now that's the for the China. For Turkey, there's this friend of mine. I, I worked with her mm, through the journey of entrepreneurship, she was just starting off. Uh, so I connected her in China. Then she had a friend who connected her Turkey, to ta with Turkey suppliers. So when she told me, oh, someone has connected me with su Turkey suppliers, we can do this. Mm -hmm. She sent me the contact, I contacted the supplier, and that's how we, we began importing from Turkey. All right. And uh, what I've uh, picked from whatever you see is that there's a lot of networking involved. True, true, So true. let's take me through your initial capital. How much did you start with? And uh, for someone who is watching this conversation and they would mm -hmm. love to mm -hmm. venture in the same industry. Mm -hmm. So how did you go about it? When I started, I just used 10,000 shillings. Okay. Uh, you know, with the China suppliers, you are, they give you a minimum. Most minimums are 10 pieces, 20 pieces. It's upon you to know how many pieces you'll pick depending on your shipping agent. Okay. Because the shipping agent has a minimum weight that you're supposed to ship. So you can ship two piece, 10 pieces and it's going to be lower than 5 kgs, which, which is the minimum for your shipping agent. So I picked a few pieces and they were shipped. Of course, they were above 5 kgs, they were shipped. And that's how I started off. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah. say it's a profitable business? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Kids clothes are bought every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So how were the profit margins? You started back in 2017. 2017, yes. Let's look at cause of this year, mm -hmm. uh, with the global pandemic. Let's go back to 2019. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are the profit margins like? 
Um, per item? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's look at the whole year. Like, the whole year? Yeah. Uh, let, let me say... And mm -hmm. a couple of challenges you mm -hmm. faced, what I did. Let me say the profit margins mm -hmm. quite quite nice. All right. Uh, depending with what you get and if the clients want it, because you can't have something that's not interesting the clients and you expect it to be but you'll have dead stock and you'll sell it at a lower price. Mm -hmm. The profit margins are quite good. I don't have the exact figures. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted to, to just estimate uh, how the business uh, mm -hmm. looked like back in 2019. Yeah. Once you bring the, let me say in 2019, mm -hmm. um, the profit was quite, business was good. Mm -hmm. That's when we, we were at the, maybe we were at, the curve was going up, 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 up. And we made quite some good money. Okay. Yeah, yeah, especially December. Yeah, December. Oh, okay. Yeah, and what are a couple of uh, highlights in this particular uh, business that you ventured into that we look back and you say, you know, I don't really regret actually starting my own business. Mm, passion. I had passion for everything, kids. I just wanted to do anything, kids. So I felt I feel fulfilled that I'm doing what I love, and it's it's bringing in something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for someone who is watching this mm -hmm. and they would like to venture into uh, the kids' fashion industry, mm -hmm. what, should, what would be your advice? My advice is start small. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford to import, okay. we have very good shops, maybe in Isli. They sell at a good price. You just go there, pick a few items, and start off with whichever capital you have. 5,000 is okay. You can also market online. You can talk to them. I know I, we, they do that. You can talk to them and they'll, you'll be getting clients and you go for the item in their shop. Right. Yeah, yeah. You just talk to them. Whichever capital you have, you can start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Catherine, it's been uh, three years now mm -hmm. on the road and uh, I would like to find out what are a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way? Discipline. You have to be disciplined with mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. You make money you plan to reinvest, okay. don't plan to spend it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to be disciplined in business, yes. And you learn your clients. One thing I tell, my, I tell those people, my friends, the ones who want to venture in business, I tell them, don't do debts. If you do debts, you'll go down in business. I've seen most of them go down in business. You do cash and you'll be good to go. A client will buy they'll buy. But if it's debts, no, don't do that. Just stay there with your stock. Another one will come and buy. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned uh, one of the financial lessons, which is uh, mm -hmm. investment. Yes. Have you done any form of investment? And if so, uh, mm -hmm. probably could mention a couple. Hmm. Yeah, I've done some investments. Mm -hmm. But in conjunction with my family, mm -hmm. I'm a family lady. Okay. I'm a mother of two boys. Mm -hmm. Together with my husband, we've done some investments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do it jointly. Okay. We plan on how to buy land. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at a couple of challenges that you faced along the way mm -hmm. when it comes to the kids' fashion industry. Mm -hmm. oh, one challenge, it's sizing. You know, most of our clients are not in Nairobi. Because of our online presence, we have clients from all over, all over Kenya. And when you're sending an item to a client, you have to be very sure of the sizing and the quality. Because some clients will, will get the, thing, the item and they'll be like, ah, I didn't expect it to be like this. I didn't mm -hmm. want this. Yes. What's this? No. So you have to be very specific when you're sending to clients the sizing and the quality. Tell the client, be specific, tell the client what you bought. It's good quality, but it's China. Because some clients will see that we have lot of things from Turkey. So maybe someone will assume, oh, this one is also from Turkey. But the price, you know, the price will, will be lower. But they assume it's from Turkey. No, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, this one is, is from China, but good quality. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you, this one is from Turkey. You'll just love it. Mm -hmm. You have to be very specific. If you're not, they'll return. And you know, you want to maintain a good name. So if a client returns, you just change. You have to to accept it and change, not re not refund. 
change you can change she can add some money you just agree just be nice okay. and you agree yeah mm. yeah what is the uh, having a background in uh, public relations yeah what a form of marketing strategies have you used to just put out your business out there to the masses to target market um i've been we have a very good online presence mm -hmm. and then word of mouth we have clients who have referred their friends their family everyone word of mouth has worked well, has worked good for us and then we have a lot of return client and our customer service is top notch so <laughs> because we want clients to come back mm -hmm. and they definitely do mm -hmm. we have clients who wait for right now they are waiting for our next talk okay. yeah yeah because they know we have good things we talk nicely to them we send things when they send their money yeah all right. That has worked good. Okay, I'd like you to give us uh, probably a couple of tips, uh, you know, two or three, mm -hmm. when it comes to you having a background in public relations, right? Yes. And how you've run the business and how it has actually, uh, you know, promoted to, to where you are in an effective way mm -hmm. compared to if you didn't have uh, mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. or a background in PR. Oh, PR has helped me a lot in how I relate to clients. Okay. One thing, you have to keep it professional. You don't go using some words on clients. Mm -hmm. You have to be very specific. Even if a client says this, you just be straight. Be very professional. Keep it professional. And then the customer service. Talk nicely to people. Welcome them. Yeah, all that has worked good for us. Mm -hmm. And then... Hmm, Marketing, marketing too. You have to do a lot of marketing. You do. You have to do a lot of marketing. There's too much competition. Mm. Yeah, okay. in this field. Now you just don't start a business three months and you expect to boom. No, 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 no. You don't do that. You okay, don't. It takes time. Uh, it takes time. Patience, yeah. True. You have to be patient. All right. So, what does the future look like? Uh, probably three, five years down the road, when it comes to Katrina ki a kids' closet. Mm. The future is bright. Mm. We expect to expand maybe to have branches outside Nairobi, okay. uh, in Mombasa, in Nakuru, major cities. We have clients from Mombasa, from Nakuru, from Kisumu. So we have branches near them. Mm -hmm. It will good for them, be good for them because they can just walk in and choose. Mm -hmm. And like now, they have to send parcel fee right. for us to send the items to them. All right. Yes. So where are you guys located and how can people find you across all your social media handles? We are located at Imenti House on mm -hmm. Tombaya Street. Mm -hmm. Zodiac stalls, stall Z31. All right. Yeah. Uh, social media handles? Katrina Kids Closet on Facebook, Katrina Kids Closet on Instagram. Okay, so mm -hmm. thank you very much, uh, Catherine Jogo, for creating time to be with us and taking us through uh, children, uh, mm -hmm. clothing, uh, mm -hmm. brand, and all about uh, kids' industry, mm -hmm. uh, clothing industry, that yes. is. We appreciate and uh, we'll be here a couple of years down mm -hmm. the line so yeah. that you can review, right? True. And True. probably if you have new, uh, do you have new merchandise coming in? Yeah. Or new Next products? week. Next, Next week. week. Very good stuff next week. Okay, so guys, yeah. make sure you follow uh, on Katrina Kids Closet across all social media handles to get more information on their new products. And uh, that's how you walk away or rather you find good quality uh, outfits for your young children, right? So make sure you stay tuned more on Why in the Morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. Make sure you don't touch that down. We'll be right back.